Peace, Israel, and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is the truth. On this segment, I'd like to discuss some of the current things that I'm seeing within the house of Israel scattered to the four corners of the earth and would like to address them. I'm going to title this segment, When Our Enemies Become Our Leaders. Once again, i like to title this segment, When Our Enemies Become Our Leaders. As a people, we fail to understand that many times our enemies are in the midst of us. Many times our enemies look like us. We're too busy looking outside of ourselves to find our enemies when from the days of old our enemies have been men who look like us, men who are our, of our bloodline who will sell us out for money and position, power and position. So there's a few things that we need to carefully take into consideration and it has been happening for generations. We have individuals who may be in the inner city who are number one selling narcotics to our people and to our children. They're terrorizing the elderly, <clears throat> making the place an unsafe place to live, okay, doing all manner of violence, not having a problem killing their fellow Israelite, terrorizing their fellow Israelite, have no problems disrespecting our women by calling them all manner of derogatory names, disrespecting the elderly, etc. Absolute lawlessness. Have glorified the violence because they have perpetuated it. Have glorified the drug dealing. Have glorified the violence towards each other and glorifying also being incarcerated. These men have been enemies unto us and they have lived in unrighteousness. They have been our tormentors in the midst of us. What has been happening and continues to happen is that we're taking those who have victimized us and we're taking them and putting them on a pedestal. The drug dealer that has terrorized the community, have killed Israelites, <coughs> and have glorified that lifestyle, our sons have seen it. Now our sons are trying to be like him. Our daughters have seen it and are seeing it. So our daughters are attracted and seek after men that walk after that wickedness. What has to be taken into account is that when these men who in times past have victimized us in all the manner that I've discussed earlier, we have no business glorifying them and putting them up in a position to speak on our behalf or to be our leaders because they have made some money. They have made money at our expense. For example, the rappers. We have many rappers who are parts of the inner city or from the inner city that has glorified all manner of violence that they have seen and have partaken in. All the things that I've discussed, disrespect of our women, our elderly, and the killing of fellow Israelites. Now, these men will speak on this, glorify it, and make millions of dollars by selling records. So now our youth thinks that this is the thing to do. Absolutely no, no respect for our people, no respect for the family unit or anything. And for some reason, they are promulgating that going to jail is some, uh, some badge of honor. So now our kids are looking towards this, and that's what they're thinking is cool. As these men sell millions of records, victimizing us, they were the drug dealers, they were the former killers, etc. 
now that they have made some money, we tend to want to glorify them. And more sickening is that some of them have the audacity to try to take a position to speak on our behalf. The very people that have victimized us. So we have rappers now with not so much TV shows, but with podcasts and YouTube videos trying to speak on the behalf of our people. These are the same men with criminal records. These are the same men that cause a called our women all manner of derogatory names. These are the same men that made music about beating and stomping and killing their fellow brother. All of a sudden, they're now 40 years old, and there have been decades of their music that has damaged our youth, that have damaged our women, that has caused a division between our youth and our elderly, lack of respect, etc., that have caused some of our young people, by listening to their music, to make errors, cause themselves to be incarcerated. Some of them will never get out. And the ones that do, they're destroyed. <coughs> they can no longer take part in the workforce. They can no longer take part in, in voting and, and things like that. They're ostracized from, quote-unquote, regular society. But yet these rappers... For all the foul that they have done and all the people that they have led astray, they are now 40 years old and 50 years old, etc. And all of a sudden, they want to be spokesperson for the very people that they have victimized, have sang in their song that's okay to kill them, okay to call our women on manner of disrespectful names, okay to beat up the elderly, etc., 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 okay to run through our women, and whatever else. All manner of vile things contrary to the Most High Law. All of a sudden, these men want to speak up on the behalf of our people and speak on how Caucasians or other people are victimizing us. My question is, what about when you victimized us? Because these rappers have more of an influence upon our youth than any other people. So now that older rapper, the older guys, are now trying to have podcasts on YouTube, etc., etc., and try to speak on things that are positive when they have done 30 years of negative that have set us way behind the ball. So these are some of the things that we have to discuss. Excuse me one second. Someone's at my door. All right, I'm back. It was actually a UPS at my door. Anyhow, uh, so these men are now trying to speak on the behalf of the very people that they have victimized. At no time have these rappers, who have the most detestable of music, have no time have they come forth to our people and state clearly, look, I am complicit in what has happened over the past 30 years. In my youth, I have said things, I have done things in my music that surely and certainly has caused our youth to go astray. They will not take responsibility in that fashion. They won't do it. And if they were to do it, it would certainly bridge the gap. It will help to fix that breach because they are responsible for it because many of our youth take their cues from these rappers. And these rappers are stating and saying things in their songs that is detrimental to our people, not only in their day-to-day -day behavior, it also is very detrimental in how other people view us as a people. So these rappers now that are now 40 years old and 50 years old is trying to come forward and speak. The first thing that we must do is we must look at their track record and look at exactly what have they done to our people, be it positive or negative. And those who have perpetrated and spoke of killing our men, beating up our elderly, getting drunk, getting high, going to jail, and all the negative things that impact our youth, these men we must hold accountable. And not because they have a few million dollars means that they have the right to pick up a mic put it in front of their face 
and speak on all the bad things that other people are doing to us when they were the primary source of these things that has caused many of our youth to go astray. So we are to start taking these rappers and these other people who want to step forth now and try to be leaders and spokesperson for all the things bad that is happening to us when at the time when some of these rappers were victimizing our people while they were out robbing, stealing, and selling drugs and then once they were able to free themselves of that yet they made music glorifying that very behavior and I'm certain these men are smart enough to know that their words in these songs impact our youth but yet they have not stepped forward and actually admit their faults to the damage that they have done to our youth, to our women, to our elderly, and to our image as a whole in the earth. They have not done this. So I would, I would suggest and ask the House of Israel not to put evildoers and enemies that has been onto our people, though they look like us, we should not at all put them in any leadership position at all when their past track record has shown that they have been enemies onto us. So we are to be mindful exactly of who we're going to listen to. Okay, and these men with this foul track record, they need to step forward and simply admit their fault that in their youth what they have done has been damaging to our people as a whole, the whole entire family of Israel, and has been damaging to our image. So, once again, we are to be mindful of the enemy that is within. Do not think all of this that has happened to us is all outside forces. Okay, a lot of this is being done by our very own people. And we are to keep an eye on them, and we are to look at their ways, past and present. Your actions will tell you a lot about a person. So when we look at these people's track record, and they're trying to come forth now and... Uh, and try to be leaders to us and speak on our behalf when they have been our enemies in times past. We are to hold them accountable and let them know, no, you, you can never hold that position. If you want to do something low key to correct yourself, that's fine. But based on your track record, you do not have the right to grab a microphone and speak on our behalf for you had a position to which you could have been positive and you could have had a good influence upon our youth. <coughs> and you had the platform in which you could have presented the best image for our people. You chose not to in order to gain some money. So you can't dare come now, 10, 15, 20 years later, after the damage has been done, and, and try to speak on our behalf in a positive light. It is too little and is entirely too late. And we're going to reject you, and we should reject you should you ever try to do that. Once again, Israel, peace and Yah bless. Thy righteousness is an everlasting righteousness, and thy law is a truth. Keep an eye on the enemy within. There are many. Peace, Israel.